will show you guys why I need it. So continue watching to see how horrible some situations in my life are. Hi, hello, my name is Carrie. Today we are going to do a full life reset. We're resetting everything. I'm gonna start with the basics, which is just the home, things around me. I've just done a little bit of a cleanup here of the kitchen because I just made breakfast and I've been in here pretty much all morning. And then we're gonna move into social media reset. And then we're gonna move into a life admin reset. And we're just gonna reset absolutely everything. There's gonna be layers to this reset. And I think we need to start off with the first layer, the foundation, the area around the home, because we're gonna go deeper into resetting other aspects of life. And I wanna make sure that the base layer is checkmarked, which means the home. And then when the home is feeling good, I can sit down and get into these other nitty gritty life resets that I think are going to be really refreshing. As you guys know, or maybe you don't know, we were traveling for a month. So as you can imagine, being gone for that amount of time and getting back, we have some laundry to do, and we just, the house just needs some love. So we're gonna do that first. I look up to the sky to remind me. I look left, I look right behind me. I keep my head up in my voice. My travel backpack, time to empty it out. I'm kind of sad, but lots of laundry to do. In my voice told just how you'd wanted me to. I've just thrown on a more cleaning, friendly t shirt. <laughs> With my arms outstretched for you to find me. The bedroom is pretty scary right now. <laughs> There's clothes everywhere. It's actually quite clean in here. It's just messy. So I just need to organize the laundry a little bit better. I pulled it out of the hamper earlier and started organizing it, as you can see, slightly. <laughs> but I need to get it into hampers over to the laundry room and then put it into the laundry. feels a million times better and I'm just going to diffuse some lavender essential oil in here okay we have done a lot around the house. It feels fresh, smells good. It's wonderful. I told you guys I had some organizing too and that you would be shocked. And you're gonna be shocked by this. <laughs> There's some serious decluttering that needs to happen on my cell phone. Because if you take a look at my inbox, I have 10,977 new emails or unread emails. So, this is a combination of things that I just never opened because they were just subscription things that I didn't care about and new ones that I need to, not as many, but definitely some admin stuff that I need to do and respond to and stuff like that too. 
Every time I get a new email, I've been unsubscribing. I actually think that there's a service that does that for you. Can you guys tell me the name of that? Because I have a service that will unsubscribe me from paid subscriptions on my bank accounts and on my credit cards and stuff, but I don't know one, and I know that it exists, one that will go into your actual inbox and unsubscribe you from a bunch that you don't wanna be a part of. So what is the name of that? If you know it, let me know in the comments. But I've just been, every time I've been getting an email, I've just been unsubscribing, but still 10,000. And replying to emails and admin and organizing short-term goals right now is a priority of mine as well. I feel like that is part of resetting. But in the back of our mind, we're thinking, oh, I need to make that dentist appointment. Or, oh, I need to reply to that one email about this from that one person that I haven't responded to. Or, oh, I need to RSVP for this or whatever it might be. <laughs> so, Right now, if you have things like that on your mind that you're thinking of, maybe just with me, we'll do a little admin time. Wow, so I've just done it on my phone. And as you can see, that number is just flying down. 1,889. So that's very exciting, but for some reason, they're not all gone. So I'm going here, I'm doing select all going down to mark at the bottom and then hit, hit mark as red. I think it's just taking time to delete them all. So the next little admin reset that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at my subscriptions that I have on my bank account that I'm paying for and I'm going to see if I actually really want them anymore and I'm going to cancel them if I don't need them. There's something called Rocket Money that I use to see what I'm signed up for. So I'm gonna look at that and see what I don't want anymore and cancel accordingly. When you go in here, you realize things that you need to do, the admin in your life for the things that you're getting charged for that you forgot about. It's pretty, yeah. I have like some things that I have signed up for annually that I need to cancel because I don't even use the service. I find I do it a lot for creative things because I make content a lot. So I'm like, oh, I'll use this app a lot for content creation and then I'll pay for it annually or something like that. And then I end up not using it very much because maybe I didn't end up liking it or it didn't suit my needs. And then I end up paying for it every year. And so I need to, yeah, just make sure that I go in and double check all that stuff. I have now just canceled two reoccurring social media sort of like organization platforms that I've had in the past that <laughs> I think I went in with high hopes and probably used for a little bit and then didn't use anymore. Okay, for this next one, we're gonna get comfy because this is a big one. We're gonna do a social media reset. <sighs> this one's gonna feel the best. So you're, we're gonna go to Instagram, go to your homepage where your whole feed scrolls, right? And just, Start scrolling and do this, I don't know, maybe make yourself a nice warm drink, something like that. Make it a good experience. Maybe do it when you're in the bath. I don't know, right now I'm doing it on the couch. I'm cozy. There's a beautiful view out the window and I just, it's a good thing. Like put yourself in a good place and just start muting or unfollowing if you want to because unfollowing, I've, I've done the unfollow, but muting sometimes is better if you are acquaintances with the people and you don't want it to be a problem or cause any drama. I've muted a lot of accounts, <laughs> to be honest, but I have more that I need to mute. And so I think the best thing you can do for your mental health is if you see something that doesn't make you feel good, just mute it. Mute the stories, mute the posts, and forget about it. It's like it never happened. <laughs> I think that we can get really caught up in watching stories regularly of other people. And we just have to ask ourselves if, one, it's adding value to our life, but two, if it just like makes us feel good. Does it make you feel relaxed? Does it make you feel inspired? If it makes you feel any of those things and 
then that's great, continue on. But if you find yourself maybe comparing yourself or you just feel inadequate or you just don't feel that great, then mute it, mute it, unfollow, do whatever you gotta do. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do a couple mutes that I've been thinking about and wanting to do. And um, it should feel good. It should be, this is part of social media that we have control over. We have control over how we feel, how much we scroll and how, what we see, right? We get to have control over that. As much as it seems like we don't have control, we do have control. And I think it's about taking that control back because as we move through life, I feel like a lot of the times there might be scenarios there's regular scenarios where you feel like you need to follow somebody to be nice, right? Like, oh, you met somebody, they followed you and you follow them back and stuff like that. And then you get to a point of your life where you feel like it's just normal and like you have to see these other people's every move or their life or the, the things that they post. But in the reality, you don't. You don't have to see anything you don't want to. You don't have to be following anybody you don't want to be. So it's about taking that control back. So get cozy, maybe even pause this video, come back to me, but go in and see if there's some stuff on your feed that you just don't wanna see and just mute it. We've just come in from going on a little family country walk up our road, which was lovely. We're making it a point to walk with Wonka every single day. We do it pretty regularly, but we're wanting to do it every day. Now that we're back, just getting back into our routine after traveling for a while. Another thing in the movement category of this reset everything, I signed up for the gym in town yesterday. This is something I've thought about for a very long time. Both Alex and I have been talking about wanting to sign up for the gym for a while. And it has a gym and then a pool and a sauna, and that sounds really nice. So we ended up signing up yesterday and we did a workout there. And it was great because they have a treadmill and they have weights and all that kind of stuff. And we have weights in the sleep out right now that we use for workouts from time to time. I'd say the majority of what I do at home right now is walks whenever we go on walks. We do hikes as a family, and I do workout routines, like I'll watch something on YouTube, whether it be yoga or Pilates, but I just feel like doing these online classes can kind of get boring for me because I'm at home. I think it'll be a really great change of energy to get myself up in the morning, drive into town, go to the gym, like do a sauna sh session if I'm feeling it, and then like do any errands that I need to do in town. It just kind of like pulls me out of being here. The idea of just switching things up when it comes to my movement routine. Hello, hello. It's the next day. I just got home from, well, we went to Wellington this morning for a meeting and we were there for most of the morning. We had lunch there and then on our way home, we stopped by the gym that I was chatting with you guys about last night. So we drove by and we were like, all right, we've got our membership, we're driving by, let's go. And so we went, I had a nice workout, I feel really good. Alex had a nice swim. We stopped by the grocery store on our way home and I was just feeling nostalgic with my Trader Joe's grocery bag. I miss Trader Joe's. I'd say that that's one of the shops when I think about what I miss most in the States, Trader Joe's, probably like a good, a good target, good target run too, but primarily, primarily Trader Joe's. And so I use this <laughs> Trader Joe's tote and I'm like, I'm not anywhere near Trader Joe's right now. But I'm gonna show you guys what I got at the grocery store because we love a good old fashioned grocery haul. And then I'm going to do a little reset of the fridge, which I feel is very, aesthetically pleasing and just very satisfying for me. Whenever we go grocery shopping, I actually love the process of putting the groceries away and organizing the fridge. It just, it inspires me. It just, it fuels me. It, it, it fuels the Virgo in me. <laughs> and so I'm gonna bring you guys 
along with me on refreshing the, the fridge. I'll show you like what it looks like now and how I like to prep food and put it into the fridge. It's part of our resetting everything. Can't reset everything without resetting the kitchen, which is the heart of the home. It's where we spend a lot of our time. So first and foremost, we found these organic coconut waters. When we were in Thailand, we drank so much coconut water because it is just so delicious and it has so many wonderful electrolytes when you feel dehydrated. When I have had any type of headache in Thailand because I was too hot or dehydrated because it was 100 degrees there, I would have some coconut water just fresh from the coconut and it would instantly make my headache better. So we found this 100% organic coconut water and so we got really excited because we went to a different grocery store than we normally do and, oh, hold on, I'm, everything's falling. We got some organic tomato paste. We got this organic vegetable bouillon for like adding to soups and stews because we'll be doing a lot of soup and stew. I don't know why, but like, I wanna smell that, but it's sealed, so I won't. We're gonna be doing a lot of soups and stews because we're moving into winter. It's autumn here in New Zealand and you can definitely feel it in the air. We've had some pretty nice days with some sunshine, but it's crisp, it's definitely getting colder. This is Ceres Organics, which is a brand that I love out here for organic stuff. It's coconut amino seasoning. And I love using this instead of like a soy sauce. I got two bags, I don't know where the other one is, probably in another bag of these baby beets. Um, I love that they're already prepped and I really love using beets for juicing, for making a juice in the morning with like spinach. This is like so convenient because I just pop it into the juicer and I just love beet juice. And I don't have any beets growing in the garden right now, so I like these little bags. This is a vanilla organic caffeine-free chai with cinnamon, and it just sounds delicious to have in the morning. I recently did a DNA test. I found out a ton of stuff and a lot of really interesting stuff that I will definitely share with you guys in a future video. But one of the things that I found out that I'll share with you right now is that I am caffeine sensitive. And I had a feeling that that was the case because if I have caffeine at 12 p.m., and even if it's just a little bit, it will affect me fully, even if it's an iced tea and not a coffee. It will affect me the entire night. I won't be able to sleep. I don't drink coffee or anything because of the caffeine. I drink it because it's a warming ritual and just an experience, and I love a warm cup of something. I love the smell of coffee. So we actually got decaf coffee because Alex is also trying to cut caffeine. So we have a decaf fair trade organic coffee that we are going to have with our espresso machine. We got some organic quinoa, some organic green olives. We got some Dijon mustard. We got some organic tomato sauce for a little pasta situation we'll probably make. I don't know where the pasta noodles are that we got, but red wine vinegar, pretty basic little cooking stuff, some new organic New Zealand apple cider vinegar. I love this stuff. Some baking soda toothpaste, red cabbage. We have some in the garden right now. I love this stuff, it's so good in salad. We have little baby ones right now though, so they're, they're not ready to eat just yet. We'll have like five of them in a couple months, maybe in just like a month actually. But right now we're gonna use that one to hold us over. And then we got some of these beautiful ginormous kiwis. Love a good kiwi snack. Sweet peppers, I love sweet peppers. I already have some in the fridge right now, so I'm gonna add these to the ones that I have. We got blueberries, which I will wash and prep in the fridge in a moment. These organic gherkin pickles that are from Series Organics as well, which I think I'm gonna open right now in that one. And then lastly, which I think that's everything, is this penne pasta. It's made with peas, lentils, chickpeas, and beans. This is what we are working with in the fridge right now. We have some stuff that we got at the grocery store not too long ago, so it's actually just really unorganized, but there's some fresh stuff in here. I don't really need to get rid of much, but I just need to reorganize and add new stuff into the mix. 
This is what we're having for dinner tonight because it's leftovers from last night. Alex made a delicious bone broth stew with like sweet potato and a bunch of veg. It was kind of like minestrone style, but with potato instead of noodles. It was so good. So we're gonna have that for dinner tonight. And I bought this tahini just the other day because I want to make hummus. So that's gonna be great. But I just need to reorganize everything. We've got fresh veg in here, like Brussels sprouts and stuff like that. I wanna organize the way that I have this stored because I need to bring more stuff in. And then I have these little like water jars on the side here because this is where I put our fresh leafy greens that are from the garden. So like our Swiss chard or kale or celery and stuff like that that I wanna keep good in the fridge, herbs and stuff like that and keep them in water. I'll put them in this section of the fridge and then I just put this cod in. We actually got two things of fish when we were at the grocery store too, but I put them right in the fridge. One in the freezer and one in the fridge where we got home. Okay, there is one thing in here that I'm gonna feed to the chickens, which is a little bit of like leftover garbanzo salad that I made the other day. That's probably not good for us to have anymore, but the chickens will love it. Okay, I have just organized the fridge as much as possible. I feel like when I organize like this, it looks like it's not a lot of food, but we have a lot of food over here, like on the shelf and stuff that we use a lot as well. I don't know. It is a lot of food, but it's just, you know, in here and stuff, we've got more. But I've just made this chia seed pudding and I looked online because I've messed up chia seed pudding before and I was like, I just need it to work this time. Hi, hello, good morning. It's a new day. It's the next day to be exact. I'm just finishing up with my chia seed pudding, which was absolutely, and is, because I've got some last little bits <laughs> left, so delicious. I've always kind of had a hard time with chia seed pudding like here and there. Sometimes it's too runny. There's a, there is definitely a rhyme and reason to the ratio, if you know what I mean. Like, you gotta have the right ratio of chia seed pudding. And I think I'm gonna tell you guys what my ratio was last night because if you like making chia seed pudding, this is super simple. And for me, I'm just always gonna remember this ratio because a lot of the times I would eyeball it and sometimes that works out, but sometimes it didn't work out. I just posted a TikTok of the ratio, so if you wanna watch me actually make it, you can go to my TikTok to do that. But I, oh, we need more chia seed. Look at that, <laughs> we're almost done. I do four tablespoons of chia seed into the jar first, because putting the chia down first helps to submerge the chia completely, which is what you want. And then I do one cup of oat milk, whatever milk you want to use. I think an alternative milk for chia seed pudding is the way to go. And I think oat is really nice. So then I do, this is a half cup, so I do two of these, but if you had a cup, one, just do that. But sometimes I like doing one serving. So if I do one serving, then I'll do two tablespoons of chia first, and then a half cup of alternative milk. I add a little dash of vanilla extract to just give it a nice little like vanilla taste. And then I love using maple syrup. We're out of maple syrup, which, and I didn't pick it up at the store. Do you ever go to the grocery store and you have a list of all these things that you need and you think you've check marked everything and then you get home and then you're like, oh, that one thing that I really want, <laughs> you forgot. So next time I'm in town, I'll pick it up. But I like sweetening it with maple syrup, but last night I used a little bit of honey and a little bit of coconut sugar and it's really nice with the vanilla extract too. I'm feeling really good today. It started off rainy and really dark and cloudy this morning, which I didn't really mind. I kind of felt like, oh, I wish it was another sunny day. And then I said to myself, it's just weather. And then when I said that, I felt a lot better. Um, I am looking up in the valley right now and it's so pretty. There's this like fog rolling in. I love when that happens, it's, it's beautiful. It's gonna be a nice day. I have this very cozy sweater on right now from Urban Outfitters that I have had for years. And I was just looking at it. I've washed it like just recently and there's just hay, little pieces of hay <laughs> stuck in it. And I'm like, I probably did something out here somewhere. It's, it's countryside living, but it is fully stuck in there. So I think I'm gonna try using my little fabric shaver and get all of the hay 
out because it, it's in there. The last little bit of reset we're gonna do is my closet situation. Just the clothes up here and down here for now. Every new season, I move clothes because we have another closet in the office that I keep a lot of my clothes in as well. And so I switch it out. So I just had a bunch of summer clothes and just like warmer climate clothes in here. And it's getting colder now, as you guys can tell with my sweater. I don't think I'll ever get used to the fact that June, July, and August are the coldest months for us over here. It is just such a crazy thing to get used to when your whole life that's always been summertime for you. Obviously we're in another hemisphere, like it makes sense. And so we're, we're getting colder over here. So I really like in a new season, whether you're moving into spring and summer or whether you're moving into autumn, winter time, the climate is changing wherever you are right now in the world. And so switching out your closet to represent what's going on during that time just is so helpful in the morning. So I moved out last night, I went into full, <laughs> I get into these moods where I'm just like, I'm gonna do this. And then I just get into it. And I probably should have filmed some of it, but it was late and I was tired and I just wanted to like move out some clutter that I had in here. And I definitely put some pieces in the closet that I will be pulling from more often, like sweaters and stuff, but I wanna organize them a little bit better. We are going from the thickest pieces to the lightest pieces here. So this will be like my base layers and then this will be like my outerwear here. And then the bottom part of my closet has all of my jeans and my pants and stuff. Some of them are doubled up. But this is just what I'm working with right now. I'm probably gonna pull that off because it is a summer skirt. And then these off because it's a linen. I forgot I even had this because it was in our coat closet. I had put it away for the summer months. And then I just went over to my coat closet and saw this and I was just like, oh, I barely wore this last winter. It's kind of nice to switch your clothes in and out like this to like pull them out of the closet and just make a little capsule wardrobe of what you're gonna wear that season because you forget what you have and it feels like you're reshopping your own clothes. I ended up throwing some of the bigger, fluffier coats down at the bottom with the jeans because there was more space down there and I wanted to free up a little bit more room up here, but a bit tight because it is thicker clothes, but I can definitely see what I have and pull from it. And that makes me very satisfied. Down here, I've added these bigger, fluffier, thicker coats, these puffs, and then I've got my jeans and other types of pants down there. And that is how I have reset pretty much everything in my life in a matter of a couple of days. So I hope that you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. I have lots more things that I wanna do, more of like the spring cleaning things. Like I wanna spring clean my closet out so that I have more space in the closet that I'm not using all the time because it's starting to get full in there when I go to put all my stuff away. So I definitely wanna do something like that. And there's, there's definitely more stuff that I could reset and organize around the house, but this feels like a really good refresh and it, it has boosted my mood. Like I feel really good, I feel lighter, I feel more motivated. And so I hope that this video gives you that type of inspiration. So I will see you guys very soon in the next one. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.